Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the design parameter optimization in ANSYS. So let's say you have this I-beam and you have one side fix and you're going to apply a force on the top, which is going to uh, create bending and stresses. Now, one of the uh, major optimization problems for most of the engineers is they want to reduce the mass or keep the mass below some level so the cost is down while still they want their parts to uh, not fail, right? They want the part to be functional and uh, the stress is below the yield strength. And you know, these two are typically opposite of each other. The more mass, the uh, bigger the part is, typically the stress goes down, but the cost goes up. So here you have two objectives right stress and mass that are against each other and so the uh, finding the right parameter or parameters is basically an optimization problem so uh, you can choose as many parameters as you want to optimize but here for simplicity and to reduce the runtime i would only choose one of the parameters of this i beam which is the width of the beam right as my input parameter and I have two objectives to keep the mass below some threshold and to keep the maximum one mice of stress below some threshold right so we want to run this optimization problem here so this is my I beam the first thing I do as I showed you in my previous video about the design points I go here to this extrude look at the sketch and then this parameter here this 60 which is this h1 I check mark it so now it's an input parameter and that can be changed by the program so if I get out of here and uh, you see here this parameter is added to the parameter set so now I want to run a static structural analysis on the system and basically uh, do that uh, fixed support and the force on the um, top surface and calculate the one mice of stress. So what I need to do is to go to the model and define the two uh, outputs that I want to uh, control, mass and max one mice of stress. So um, here is ANSYS mechanical. I create a simple mesh here. And uh, these are using the hexa elements, which are good typically. Uh, they are fast and they're relatively accurate and uh, then I go ahead and insert a fixed support here and then I insert a uh, force on this top surface of um, negative 30,000 Newton in the y direction so my static structural is ready to go the things i need is one is the stress one mices and what i need to export is maximum so now this is one of the parameters of my system as an output the other one is mass and mass is not under solution but if you go under geometry and click on the solid and come down here under properties then one of the parameters you can access is mass Right, so you see right now the mass is about 11 kilogram and if I solve this problem we can find the maximum one mice of stress in the part and uh, here let's take a look and that is about 141 megapascal so what we want uh, is let's say we want to keep the mass below some uh, value here the mass is 11 let's say up to 50 kil kilogram I'm okay but definitely I want to bring this uh, mass down to let's say 120 uh, sorry the maximum stress bring it down to 120 so 140 is not sufficient for me I want some safety factor around 2 or so right because you know structural steel is about 210 so the uh, maximum uh, then stress I can apply is if I use a safety factor around 2 is half of that 210 so it's about 115 120 right so uh let's say that's what i want maximum stress below 120 at the same time the max the mass cannot go above 15 kilogram right because the cost is more than what i can afford so this is the problem clearly the solution i have right now is not satisfying the mass is good but the stress is not so how can i 
uh, run an optimization on this. So here, with the two parameters defined as output, I get out, and you clearly see that now I have the outputs and the input. And now what I need is to go here under design exploration and bring this guy says direct optimization. Grab this and then put it here so it is connected to my parameter set, right? And now if I double click on direct optimization, now I'm in the optimization area. And now here, this is my optimization. And I can choose basically uh, some parameters here, for example, how fast do you want the optimization to go, right? How many uh, samples do you want to try? So when it's at medium between the lower bound and the upper bound of your parameters, right? The input parameters is going to use 22 samples, right? But if you make it quick, it is only going to use five samples. So it's quick, but uh, you might skip the good points, right? And if you go long, then of course it takes a long time, but it is going to try a lot more points. So here I keep it at medium or a quick that is close to medium or something like that, right? So uh, let's say here 13 points, something like that between the upper and the lower bound. Now you might say, where are they? I'll show you. The other thing is the method, which is automatically selected right now. If you want, you can choose it manually and then it says what method. Is it MOGA? Is it LNPQL? Is it MISQP, adaptive multiple point, and so on. And by the way, if you're wondering what are these letters, MOGA, NLPQL, and so on, let me uh, tell you exactly what they are. So this uh, method of the first one is called, uh, or MOGA, right? The MOGA is called multi-objective genetic algorithm. So since it's genetic algorithm, it is going to run several, basically, uh, optimization points. So clearly, you can have multiple objectives, right? Your, your goal is not to just uh, minimize, maximize, or keep one single output parameter below some level or above some level. You can have more, and in our case, since we are controlling mass and stress, so we have multiple outputs. So MOGA can be a good one. And the method is um, uh, basically genetic algorithm. And the good thing about it is it tries to find the global optimum, not just a local optimum. So this MOGA is a good algorithm. If you are uh, talking about this MISQP, so it stands for Mixed Integer Sequential Quadratic Programming. And what it does, basically, it assumes that you have integer values for the inputs. And uh, that's good when your uh, input values can change over integers. Now, in our case, since the width of the beam can be any number, it doesn't need to be necessarily integer, then we don't need to go with MISQP. Then we have this method of NLPQL, which is nonlinear programming, but by quadratic Lagrangian. And uh, this one is, of course, the Lagrangian method. It's a gradient-based uh, method. And, you know, the gradient-based methods, they all can be trapped in local optima. So it will, it might be faster than a genetic algorithm. Uh, but uh, first of all, it is limited to uh, a single objective function, not multiple, and it might be trapped in what? In a single, uh, in a, a local optimum, okay? So this is not necessarily exactly what we want. What we want is clearly the input can go in over any value, not just integer. We have more than one objective, and our goal is to find a global optimum instead of a local optimum. And then we have all sorts of other things like the screening method, which is basically sampling and sorting, okay? So, uh, and uh, it is typically for used for a preliminary design. The goal is to do a, a very, very simple, basically sampling, right? Finding samples and then trying to find an appropriate, basically, solution out of them. So in this case, what I will do is I will change it back to auto and let ANSYS basically decide for me, although it's probably going to go over either screening for a simple study or maybe MOGA for uh, multi-objectives. So uh, 
this is about what this is about the speed of the and the number of samples and the method there are more options that you can basically choose here but uh, let's just skip and go forward to the parameter here which is the width and here you have the lower bound and the upper bound remember the number that you are choosing right now is 60 and here it's about almost uh, five or six units 10 percent it's 10 percent above and 10 percent below your design value right so if you wanted to uh, research a uh, bigger search sorry search a bigger area for you go ahead and change this so maybe i want to go from 40 to 80 or something like that okay so try to expand your uh, search region so you have a better chance of finding a solution the other thing is you go here under objectives and constraints and you try to define the um, basically the uh, objectives here so here you go and say well the maximum stress now here you can maximize it minimize it seek a target or something in this case i just want to keep it below some uh, upper bound so i'm not going to choose any of those and i come here to constrain and i say i want to keep it below some upper bound and it says how much is your upper bound and i say i wanted 120 okay and then it says okay do you have anything else yes i also need the solid mass and i want also this to be below some upper bound and this time 15 kilogram right and that's it these are the two uh, objectives that i have and i set up my parameters i set up my optimization and now all i need to do is to go over update which will generate as you saw 13 samples between 40 and 80 right as you can see here and then it is going to evaluate your uh, two objectives and see whether any of them fits the constraint so what it does here it could be something like a um, simple uh, screening method because clearly you see that uh, the values of these two objectives at those sample points are not what are not evaluated yet but it knows where it is going to go and look so clearly there is no intelligence in this search it's a pure sampling search that it is doing it's clearly not a moga method right or it's not a gradient base because in gradient base you don't know where you're going until you evaluate your point you evaluate the gradient and everything then you know where you're going to go next then next then next but right now you know exactly where you're going to be looking right in the search domain so this is clearly a screening method that's what it does right and you see the initial point was 60 now it evaluated 41 and then it keeps evaluating all of them and then we'll let you know if any of them will fit so here i'm going to stop the video let it run through all of these points and then we see if there is any solution here okay so here after a few minutes the optimization is done and as you can see here, by adding to the width of the beam, you see clearly the stress is going down. On the other hand, the uh, mass is going up. And there is a point here, right at the 69.231 for the width, that the stress falls below 120, yet the mass is still below 15 kilogram. But right after that, the stress is still below, but the mass oh, uh, passes 15 kilogram. So here you clearly have one candidate point here, this uh, column basically 10, right? And of course, if you did a quicker optimization and uh, you skip this point, so your numbers would jump from, let's say, 66 to 72, and you miss this point in the middle, then you would have not found any solution. So one of the things is if it's a screening method and it's just a simple sampling method, you need to make sure that, especially if your search region is not very small, you need to have enough samples, okay? Otherwise you might have missed it. So what I would do is here, now if I double click on the candidate points, the only candidate points that it found from all of the 13 points that might work is clearly the 69. If it found another point similar to this that would have worked, it would add it to it. But right now, clearly, see, this is the only point that has these three gold stars, which means this point is going to work, right? So now we want to choose this width of the beam 
for the design of our part, right? So how do I copy this optimum design and use it for my geometry, right? So what you will do is you right click here and say insert as a design point. So now you see the DP is added next to it. So this guy is now another design point in addition to that 60 that you had. And now if I go back to project, right? Now I should be able to uh, basically go to this parameter set. And you see in addition to 60, the 69 is also what? Added. Now right now 60 is your current design point. So you want to change your current design point from 60 to what? to 69 so what you would do is we right click on the 69 and you say what copy inputs as current so now this guy is going to be your current design instead of what instead of that 60 now your 69 is your current design and what you need to do is you right click here and the next thing you would do is you update for basically this selected design point which basically means calculate your values for this which you already did just update the system and now the geometry should also be updated with width of 69 mil instead of what instead of 60 mils and then we're going to go and see that so now it is trying to update the geometry with this current design point 69.231 it should not take a long time and then after this we can go and look at the geometry okay almost done okay so the parameter is updated now if we double click on the geometry and go to the mechanical here we go look at that this width of 60 is now automatically updated to 69.231 so this was a simple parameter design, a design parameter optimization. And you can add more parameters, you can add more objectives, and uh, you can change your optimization algorithm and hopefully get what you wanted. Thank you so much for your attention. I will see you in my next video.